What is up guys and welcome back to the Hentai Racing YouTube channel and I'm blessed that you guys have stayed with us because we have not been uploading as much as we usually do. So thank you for that. Thank you for tuning into this one. Um, since a bunch of you guys asked, um, it seems like you guys want to know the details on the, the builds. So we're going to start out with the S550 because um, it is the furthest uh, along in the build that we are. Um, in my opinion, uh, Tyler's car is pretty close, has a lot of stuff on it, um, a lot of aftermarket parts, a lot of goodies on that one. So we'll do that one next, and then we'll uh, work on Alex's SN95. Um, pretty much all these cars are uh, really simple. Um, I mean, this one looks crazy and stuff, but it's really not that crazy. Then we'll get more into uh, talking about the 2023 plans for anti racing. Um, for this car, for me, for Alex, for Tyler, um, we're going to be doing a couple different series. As you guys know, Clutch Kickers is not going to be a thing in 2023, which is unfortunate. Um, but I definitely understand where they're coming from. They don't really have a track. So go support those guys um, so they can get uh, their series back up and running, hopefully in 2024. Because I really enjoyed driving that series. It was a lot of fun for me, and I learned a lot as a driver um, and just a lot as a person. Uh, driving in that series so it was great um so we'll get into that and then yeah we'll see where that takes us First, I just want to say thank you to BC Racing. Uh, they have been definitely my biggest supporter um, of everything. Uh, you know, obviously I work there, um, but they help out a ton with the program. Um, they pretty much push me to drive clutch kickers. Uh, so I'm very fortunate for BC Racing. If you need custom suspension on your drift setup, your autocross setup, your drag setup, or anything else, reach out to me and we'll get you set up with the right coilovers for what you're doing. Uh, some of you guys may know, most of you probably don't um, because we weren't posting when this was happening. Um, but basically how I got into drifting was I've always liked the sport. Von Gittin Jr., huge inspiration, drifting the Mustangs. I've always loved Mustangs. My dad was a Mustang guy, big racing guy, named me after a professional NASCAR driver, in fact, uh, Davey Allison, number 28. So that's kind of where I got my name and my number. Uh, stole a little bit of a swag there, um, but back in, I want to say it was 2020, I bought a S197 with a Whipple on it, um, got a super good deal on it, because it had a second gear synchronizer going bad in the trans, I paid $6,000 for it, it was never purchased to be a drift car, um, but it kind of just spiraled into that, because I was like, I don't really want to drive this on the street all the time. Um, so let's just turn it into a fully built drift car. Um, we got pretty deep into that one at coilovers, angle, dual caliper setup. Uh, I'll drop a, uh, a video. Of, I'll drop a video in that car. Uh, right so now. I drove that for about, what would you say, a year, year and a half? -ish. Something like that. Got pretty decent in it. Um, realized that the solid axle didn't give me the adjustments that I needed in the rear to, uh, really, uh, excel at the sport. Um, so I sold it, then I was looking at these, I sold, the entire purpose of selling that car was to get myself into one of these chassis. Um, everybody said I wasn't gonna be able to do it, uh, this, that, and the other, and I was gonna end up giving up on drifting, which clearly did not happen. I got exactly what I wanted. Um, so I sold that car, then uh, about two months later, uh, I found this car on Copart, so this is not a clean title car. This is a salvage title unit. Um, it was in Ohio. Uh, it had 27,000 miles on it when I purchased it. 27,885 to be exact. Um, so Nick from uh, Spark Speed Shop, he's the broker that I uh, went through to purchase this car. Um, I paid $10,800 for it. Uh, it had some pretty significant damage on the quarter panel. Um, that's, we got most of it out, but we kind of wrapped it over it. It was never fixed properly. 
There was some damage under here. The subframe was tweaked. Uh, well, it wasn't just tweaked. It was literally broken. The toe arm was like ripped in half. Not the toe arm, but the toe arm pickup pick point. Um, so I bought this in February of 2021, I want to say. 10800 bucks. Uh, I was supposed to have it delivered to my house. Um, but like the last day before Copart start char starts charging you uh, storage, uh, the towing company called me and they were like, hey, do you have a forklift where you're at? And I was like, no, why would I need a forklift? I can get it off your trailer with the jack if I need to. Um, so they said, no, they weren't going to do it. So uh, Andrew Grendel, he was nice enough to let me use his truck. I had a trailer. And we, me and his friend Vince, went all the way to Ohio to pick this thing up. All right, so we drove all through the night, me and Vince, all the way to Dayton, Ohio. Waited there for, I don't know, it was probably like four or five hours for them to release the car to me. Um, we got it on the trailer, or they put it on the trailer with the loader, which kind of hurt my soul to watch the car just being picked up with the loader. I was like, I just paid eleven thousand dollars for this car. Um, I appreciate it if you'd be a little easy with it, but there was some surprises. Um, let's pop the hood here. And we'll get right into the performance mods of this thing. I haven't really done much to this thing to add power to it, if any at all really, other than the uh, the Ortiz tune, which did give it a good pickup. But pretty much everything that's been done to it, uh, horsepower gains wise, was done by the previous owner. Um, so the first thing that I noticed when I popped the hood was this is not OEM routing for the vacuums. Um, so I was like, okay, this thing could be on E85. Then I noticed the JLT intake, which they also put on there and then i took a peek down yonder and saw that it had bbk long tubes on it so that piqued my uh, curiosity and i reached out to the previous owner which i found on instagram um and i basically asked them for the rundown he told me that he added the jlt intake the uh the mcleod stainless clutch line the bbk long tubes an 18 manifold that wasn't ported, which is another thing that I added. It was, it's got a ported 18 manifold. Uh, LU47 injectors, long tubes, E85, um, an Exetti Mach 500 clutch, which lasted a good bit of time um, before I was doing third gear. Uh, I was basically dumping the clutch in third gear in front of my house, and it decided that it was no longer gonna be a part of the program. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise. I mean, the car pretty much that's that's what I said I wanted was a basically a full bolt on E85 car. Um, we did take the uh, timing cover off and do the boundary oil pump gears, the billet ones. Um, if you know anything about these Coyotes, you know that that's pretty pivotal in uh, high RPM operations. Um, so if, if you're racing your S550 or driving it very hard um, on a on a a fairly frequent bases, I would definitely recommend doing uh, some type of oil pump gear upgrade. Uh, we did the, uh, the standard billet oil pump gears that Boundary has. They have a couple different series now, the black series, which is like concave. Um, but we just have the standard ones. They've been working great for two years now. Um, the car makes around, I would say, like 460 to the tire. Uh, when we went to the dyno, I didn't realize that tow and camber mattered so much on the dyno. So I robbed myself with some horsepower there. Um, I'd like to get it back on there and uh, see where it's actually at, just for peace of mind and knowing. Um, but that's pretty much it for performance. I mean, it has, uh, now it has a RXT McLeod twin disc with the lethal uh, steel flywheel. Um, it's got Flowmaster Outlaws, which is basically straight pipe. It's got two resonators on it, which are tiny, doesn't do much you've seen this car in person or in some videos it it's absolutely unnecessarily unloud that's pretty much uh, every time I drive this car someone says it's the loudest car they've ever heard um, I don't believe that but uh, it is pretty loud so the exhaust obviously it has the BBK long tubes the Flowmaster mid pipe 
uh, down to the Flowmaster resonators. That's what makes this thing scream like it does. Uh, this is all Flowmaster brand stuff uh, all the way up until here where it meets the BBK stuff. Um, we did have to put a new trans mount in this thing. It was broken when I got it. And then we also had a snapped off motor mount. So we added these BMR uh, steel mounts instead of the uh, cast aluminum that comes with these cars. Um, we still don't have solid actual motor mounts, so we might change those out soon. Um, and that's pretty much all for performance mods. All right, so now that the performance is out of the way, we'll move on into the interior and uh, show you guys some things about what's going on inside the cabin of this thing. So as I said, this thing has, now it has about 28,200 miles on it. So it's still a pretty, pretty new car. It's not a clean title, but super low mileage. I love this thing. So when we first picked this thing up, uh, it pretty much had full interior. Um, pretty much everything was there. Uh, the airbags were gone off in the steering wheel. All these curtain airbags were exploded. Uh, this airbag down here was exploded. Dude said he crashed into a tree. Um, I don't really know what happened, but I didn't see any tree marks, so I'm not calling him a liar, but I don't actually know how this thing was crashed. Um, so, when I first started driving it, it wasn't caged. The cage didn't come until I found out I was doing clutch kickers. Uh, so I drove it with most of its interior for a while. Um, we added the the Siki Hydro setup, which I really like this this gold finish that they put on there. Uh, Drift HQ lines, Willwood Master. Um, back to the dual caliper setup that we'll get we'll get into later uh, when we work on suspension. Um, but now we've added this uh, saw belt halo seat. This is the GT pad with the medium pad sizes. These are actually interchangeable. So all of the uh, all of the the actual frames to these seats are the same, but the pads get bigger or smaller uh, depending on if you're a bigger person or a smaller person. Uh, this is probably the nicest seat that I've ever sat in, and everybody that sits in it is like, "Wow, this thing is really comfortable." And I'm like, "Yeah, that's kind of why I bought it." Um, that seat there is Alex's seat, uh, that came out of my old S197, I had two of those, I sold one, I gave one to him, um, we got the saw belt harnesses to match the seat, they sent me a whole goodie package with shoes and gloves, and that's pretty much all the safety equipment that I've been using, it's the cam lock style, which is my favorite, these are very nice harnesses, they're very easy to use, as opposed to the clip-in ones that are on the passenger seat it's literally just you just it's so easy to harness up these things none of that tomfoolery it just clicks in like that and then when you want to get out you just boom. just that simple then we have an NRG hub and NRG quick release attached to the BC wheel you want to hand me that this is a limited edition wheel um, we only made a hundred of them total, 50 in leather, 50 in suede. This is number two out of 50. Uh, it's signed by Chelsea Vanofa and Von Gettin Jr. So I can channel my, uh, my inner RTR boys when I'm driving. NRG quick release. And as you guys know, I love the color gold. All gold, everything. Then we have a cagekits.org cage. Um... This is, they had a they had a different design uh, when I was looking at purchasing it. Um, it was like X style. So it had the two bars that connect up here and come down and then two bars that came from down here. Um, I asked them if they could make me NASCAR style door bars cause I like the look of it better. Um, and I actually think it's a little safer uh, cause you have two parallel bars right next to you with uh, these three, um, support bars and intrusion bars i don't know uh, i just feel safer with these style bars um we got the rtr shift knob because this thing didn't come with the shift knob when they gave it to me uh, it was just kind of i'm guessing he had a shift knob that he really wanted off of the car so he took that then this handbrake mount uh we actually made with a uh, cad cardboard aided drawing and then I had uh, Alex's dad cut it on the CNC cutter at his work. 
Uh, it's been working out nice. It's nice and sturdy. It's never given me any issues. Um, it uses factory, these, these two factory studs and these two factory uh, bolt holes for the uh, console. Um, if you guys ever got an S550, by the way, uh, this thing right here, this is the, uh, it's like the key transmitter. Um, it's not like in the dash or anything. It's actually in the center console. So when I gutted this car, uh, it wouldn't start up. And I was like, well, what's going on here? And I started looking at the console and that's where the key transmitter was. So we got that and we just got this, this uh, janky fire extinguisher that I have to have. Um, it's looking, not even looking, mounted in there all the way. Looking to upgrade to fire suppression uh, for the 2023 season, but we'll get to that later. That's pretty much all for the interior. There's nothing crazy going on in here. I want to put some lights in, um, maybe one day. Uh, just got to find somebody who can wire it. Is that a is that a dig at me? That was a dig at you. Uh, that's messed up. But now we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about the um, the outside of this thing and uh, what wheels are on it and stuff. So these are BC Forge. These are the RZ 39s in brushed champagne bronze. They are 18 by nine and a half plus 12 squared. So it's a square wheel. Um, they can technically be used front or back. I don't. I don't really prefer staggered setups. Um, so pretty aggressive offset. Uh, you can see that these brakes are huge. So clearancing those, um, you know, with the wheel can be hard. A lot of wheels don't fit this car. Um, so you have to find the right barrel that you need in order to clear these brakes. These are base brakes and they're obviously super huge. Um, very fortunate for BC to hook me up on those wheels too. Uh, they're very nice, and a lot of people say that I should not be drifting on them because they're uh, very expensive, uh, but I like them, so that's why they're on here. Then uh, this wrap was designed and applied by uh, Wraps Direct, previously known as PW Graphic Solutions uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. This is this base piece right here. It's all one piece, so all this stuff is, I mean, not one piece, like obviously there's cuts in it and stuff, but... This is mainly one piece, and then the uh, other stickers are like applied on top of it. So this is a different sticker, this is a different sticker, this is a different sticker, but the base is all one. Um, and shout out to all these guys on the side of this car. Uh, this would not be possible without any of them. Uh, so Driftaholics, Raps Direct, Foundry Pumps, Funk Haver, Ortiz Performance, BC Forge, Parker Performance, of course, you know we had to put hand tight racing on there. Easy Racing, that's a big one, and uh, Tire Streets. So shout out to those guys for making this thing look really good uh, for the 2022 season. Uh, I can be more thankful for you guys, so uh, we appreciate that. And you guys go show them some love and support their page so that they can keep doing things for grassroots racing. So while we're on the subject of the appearance of the car, uh, Scotty D, Race Development, has came up with these bash bars which i did not realize oh no that's just dirt we're good. uh it's really dirty right now um we didn't pressure wash it at all or do anything to clean it up uh kind of just came off the trailer and then now it's in here uh so they got these really cool uh bash bars that protect pretty much the entire front of the car if alex can get in there and show you it goes all the way to the headlight um so that will help in the instance of a crash uh bolts right up to the factory uh Crash bar pickup points on both sides. Uh, looks like we've only got three out of the four because this thing kind of had a little bit of uh, damage on, I think it was this side, yeah. yeah. That was from the previous owner, whatever yeah. he did. Um, but it doesn't go back any further than that, we checked. Uh, so that's still good. Uh, these bash bars are super nice and super helpful, especially when you put all these parts on here that make the car a lot lower. Uh, it really becomes a pain to jack up. So we got the front one. And we got the rear one, which this one has helped a ton. Uh, if you guys watched the bushing video, you'd know that my suspicion as to why the uh, the diff bolts were breaking was because we were jacking up the car by the diff so many times. Uh, the rubber just eventually got kind of loose and then the bolts backed out. So lack of maintenance on the diff bolts and jacking it up all the time by that. Um, 
I think that's what caused the failure, but this alleviates that problem. We do not have to jack the car up by the diff any longer or fight with it to get it up in the air uh, because it's so low at the track. So we just stick a jack right there, boom, she's up. So not only do they look really cool, uh, they also are super functional and will definitely help you in the instance of a crash because the factory crash bar only goes to like right here and this goes a lot longer. All right, so we'll dive right into the suspension of this thing. Um, it's Fun Haver by BC Racing. Obviously, you know my style. So anything I can get from that RTR lab, I'm going to get. This is their Fun Haver kit, um, developed by Chelsea and Vaughn, and I'm sure a bunch of other people that I don't know. Um, but this thing is great. This is the second kit that I've had on here, um, and personally, I like this one better. I like uh, what it does to the car and uh, transition specifically. Um, OEM front sway bar. Uh, it reuses the OEM knuckle, which I was skeptical about when I first got the kit uh, because I've only ever had like a, a machine knuckle that was specifically made for this, but it works great. I have no complaints about this angle kit at all. Um, it makes less noise than the previous one that I had. Uh, it has I mean, I don't think you need any more than that, really. Um, I mean, you could always use more, but it doesn't come loose as much. Um, we do use red Loctite on all components uh, up here uh, to keep everything tight. Uh, we do frequently nut and bolt check this car. Um, this kit comes with its own tie rod, uh, its own arms, kind of turns it into a single pivot McPherson design instead of a double pivot McPherson design where you have two arms that come here. Technically, it still has two arms, but they're bolted together, making it kind of one arm. Um, we have the BC Racing ER series, uh, which is the double adjustable um, rebound down here, compression up at the top. Uh, we're using 10 kg springs right now. Um, if Alex can get in there and I can turn this, you can see the numbers on it. That's the inner diameter, the length of the spring, and the kilogram rating. So it's a 62 inner diameter, 200 millimeter length, and 10 kg rate. Uh, we may be bumping those up to 12 k's. Um, I'm not 100% certain yet. Uh, I do see a little bit of dive still um, on hard transition. Um, it's not all the time, but I think a 12 kg would fix that. We might go with Swift. Um, it's a standard uh, BC camera plate. It's not the Fun Haver one, which they do provide. Um, this The kit that I got just didn't come with one. Um, you can also see here that they relocate the sway bar in link to the lower control arm instead of the coilover, which is how this car comes from the factory. And that's to prevent binding um, of the sway bar in link and you basically limit your steering angle. So uh, kudos to them for acknowledging that and relocating the sway bar. Uh, in link to the lower control arm, uh, it helps out a bunch. So you can see here we're almost maxed out on our height adjustment all the way up. That's because this is a, I want to say it's, don't quote me on this specific number, but it's very close. I think it's a 38 millimeter roll center correction, uh, which basically means it turns this OEM knuckle into a drop knuckle and lowers the car more than just a typical coilover would. Uh, so we had to run those all the way up. Um, you can get these in custom lengths. Um, if I ever have to order another front pair, I probably will get them in a custom length because I still think the car is a little too low in the front. Um, but it's nothing major. Um, we run about 8 degrees of caster in the front of this car. As you can see there when it's kind of straight. Somewhat. About 8 degrees of caster. This is a good shot at it. And then... This is around five and a half degrees of negative camber um, with an eighth inch toe out total. Uh, that really helps the self steer of the vehicle. Um, I always run toe out and I run uh, a little bit of uh, negative acumen, just a very small amount of negative acumen, like almost no acumen, but very small amount of negative acumen, which I love. So moving on to the rear, um, you can kind of see where it was damaged right there uh, from the impact with the previous owner. You can also kind of see some of the damages that they caused here. Um, 
we did have to replace this entire subframe. I got this from the parts farm uh, for pretty pretty decent amount. I think it was like 600 bucks ship. Uh, didn't come with the diff. Yeah, so fine. we replaced the subframe, uh, fixed a few little things with the uh, frame rail and stuff like that. Um, nothing too major. Uh, this part right here uh, was ripped like literally in half uh, from the other subframe. So we did weld it and put a piece over it and get it to work, uh, but the subframe ultimately needed to be replaced. Um, so we got the BCs back here, ER series, also double adjustable. Um, this is really where you need the double adjustability. It's not so important up front. Um, once you tune them in the front to be kind of digressive, uh, which you can do through tuning of the suspension, uh, maybe we'll do a video on that later. Uh, we're just not gonna get into that today. So we got the double adjustables. Um, this is a custom spring that I asked the factory to make me. Uh, it's a 12 kg uh, with the motion ratio on this car of about 0.48. It ends up being about a 6 kg to the tire, which is a pretty soft setup. Um, it's a really long spring. Uh, I think it's like 240 millimeters in length. It's not marked because uh, it's like basically a prototype. Um, other than that, we got FDF arms back here for the adjustability. You can see the uh, FDF upper uh, camber arm there that does the camber. And then we have the FDF toe arm down here, which does the toe. Um, we typically run about a half a degree of positive camber in the rear of this car and around a quarter inch toe in. Um, Basically, what you're trying to do when you do that is when the car squats, you're trying to get the tire as flat as possible so you have the most contact patch. And in turn, that will give you the most grip because you have more tire on the ground. Uh, so we also got, these are pretty fresh. Um, I've only done maybe two or three events on these. This is a Steeda diff brace, um, which I got courtesy of Parker Performance. You can see it runs up there, runs into the cradle, bolts to the bolts to the uh the subframe here and just kind of holds everything from twisting and turning and all that good stuff uh, we also got these speed pro uh poly bushings um during the same upgrade when we had the uh subframe on the ground the last time um as you can see there it's it's all the way throughout so the mounting of the, the actual diff or the the subframe is poly and the mounting of the actual diff is poly front and rear with that added steed in brake setup uh, we have the fdf uh, dual caliper setup which you can't see um you wouldn't be able to see it from the inside or the wheel off well maybe with the wheel off you'd be able to see it but we're not going to take the wheel off if you want to know what that bracket looks like you can google it um, but it holds this wheel wood caliper um it does not hold this caliper like most uh, dual caliper setups do um, so it's got the wheel woods on there uh, they work phenomenally. You can see the routing from my lines comes from the inside to this T, and then these are pretty snug to there, zip tied to the uh, factory gas line stuff. Um, so it's never had an issue with any of those. Um, just if you ever put that on your car, make sure you use red Loctite um, because they will come loose. There's a lot of vibration back here, especially when your wheels aren't balanced and you're drifting the car very hard, there's a lot of vibration. Um, so that's how we have the, uh, the dual caliper handbrake set up. It works phenomenal. Uh, I would not recommend any other setup. I don't like inline setups. There's a lot of brake fade. Um, and you, you're doing too much stuff in there to have any issues with that. So don't tap into your factory brake lines, in my opinion. Uh, get a dual caliper set up with a good quality caliper because uh, that's going to matter. So like I said, uh, this car is relatively simple. I mean, it has a few upgrades. Um, but nothing too crazy yet. Uh, we hope in 2023, um, I either want to upgrade the trans to a GSR dog box, which is my, that's what I really, really want. Um, but maybe also a Ben Calamer MT82, which they go in, they replace all the gears and make it more notchy like a T56, which I would also take a T56 as well. Um, but beggars can't be choosers. So uh, I really want a GSR uh, for what we're going to be doing next season. Uh, I feel like it would help. Um, sometimes the MT82 locks me out of third gear. Yeah, so uh, GSR is what we're really looking for. Um, I really like the 
clutch is shifting and the four speed uh, and they seem to be very reliable and they seem to be the go-to uh, gearbox in drifting um, there is some others out there but that's the one that I want that's the one that I prefer based on the research that I've done um, we also have to add fire suppression to this car um, an SFI rated shift boot um, and I also depending on the schedule for the Pro-Am because I want to run the US Drift Circuit Pro-Am in 2023 and attempt to earn my Formula Drift Pro Spec license um, so that will be our main focus for the 2023 season as Clutch Kickers is not going to be a thing um, some other things that I would like to do to the car well not really to the car but I'd like to have some uh, spares um, and some different uh, differentials for different tracks like uh, say if we run the bank at OSW um, when we did bank tracks at Clutch Kickers um, at the Freedom Factory, uh, we would often find ourselves in between uh, like void and third gear uh, to where the car didn't have enough power to spin third gear on the bank um, unless we aired the tire pressure up, which made us very slow on the infield. Um, so I want to get a different diff. This is a 315. I want to get a 355 and a 373 so we can swap those out change our wheel speeds, change our power band, um, and hopefully do better on bank tracks if we do any bank tracks. And then another focal point for the uh, 2023 season on top of doing the US Drift Circuit Formula Drift licensing Pro-Am events uh, will be to upload better and more frequently for you guys um, so you always have something to watch. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on all of what we do for the 2023 season and on the giveaway car uh, that's still a thing we're about to drop a new team shirt uh, alex has been working hard on that so i'd appreciate if you guys uh, you know buy one of those if not it's cool uh, just continue to watch share this with your friends and uh all that jazz and we appreciate you guys watching and we appreciate your continued support and uh, as a team um we hope to get more seat time as a collective unit uh, especially alex want to get him on the track as much as possible in 2023 uh, as well as me, Tyler. We have a bunch of, uh, probably at OSW a bunch. Uh, definitely going back to Holly Ford Fest. I'm not going to miss that. That was sick. Uh, that was one of my favorite events of the year. Um, and then, you know, basically depending on the amount of support that we get, uh, maybe go to like Grid Life or somewhere out there. Um, pretty much I want to drive every event that I can uh, as long as I have the means All that to do guys, that. And we appreciate you guys watching and we appreciate your continued support. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time.